evening. First of all, I welcome our VIPs who are present today. Yang berbahagia, Professor Datuk Dr. Aili Tan Shahwai, Director of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, University of Science Malaysia, and Executive Director of the Asia Pacific University Community Engagement Network, Upper Chen. Yang berusaha, Dr. Nur Adilina Muhammad Akib, Deputy Director of the Center for Global Sustainability Studies, CGSS, University of Science Malaysia. Yang berusaha, Dr. Nur Laila Muhammad Zanuri, Senior Lecturer of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, University of Science Malaysia. Yang berusaha, Technologies, Dr. Shahri Zanazri, Principal of Desa Siswara School. Yang berusaha, Dr. Gui Sailing, General Manager of Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC. Respected sponsors tonight, Penang Youth Development Corporation and Mira Wardrobe. Respected Vice Principals of Desa Siswara School, Puan Muazzah Ismail and Puan Nik Nur Izzati Muhammad, Advisor for the Power of Youth Taking Action, Puan Nurul Fahna Cik Hassan and Encik, Muhammad, Encik Hussein Muhammad Idris. Respected the President of Students Council of Desa Siswara School, MPDR, Mr. Ahmad Fazan Lim. Project Director of the Power of Youth Taking Action, Mr. Jordi Alva Osmo. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most gracious. We shall begin this program today with du'a recitation, led by Mr. Iqmal Hafiz. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali wa ashabi ajma'in. Ya Allah, Ya Muhamminu, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar. Praise be to God, the Lord of the world. Peace and blessing be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions, and for those who follow his example till the judgment day. Allahumma ya Allah, on this blessed night, in conjunction with the power of Youth Taking Action 2022, we implore you and grateful toward you in your favor of all the infinite blessing to us, your humble servant, to live a safe and prosperous life. We seek your blessing for our flawless progress of this event from the beginning till the end. We seek, we seek your guidance to stay clear of anything that would be detrimental to this event. Ya Allah, kindly give us strength and courage to face the struggle to find and gain knowledge. Make us, make us responsible intellectual. Grant us with valuable knowledge that will be beneficial to mankind. Bless us with physical and spiritual health fitness of mind and strength of spirit. Ya Allah, grant us grant us strength to our teachers and our leaders to continue to serve for people, society, nation and religion. Ya Allah, make the world a place of eternal peace and prosperity all the time. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina azabannar walhamdulillahi rabbi alamin. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Amin, amin, ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Mr. Ikhma Hafiz, for the du'a just now. Moving on, we are pleased to invite Mr. Jordi Alva Osmond to say a few words on this program. Please welcome. Greeting everyone. Greeting from USM and best regards. Thank you, Ivan Oz. Yang berbahagia, Professor Dato Dr. Aileen Tan Shaohuai, Director of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, University of Science Malaysia, and Executive Director of the Asia-Pacific University Community Engagement Network, APUSEN. Yang Bursaha, Dr. Noor Adelina Muhammad Akib, Deputy Director of the Center for Global Sustainability Studies, CGSS, University of Science Malaysia. Yang Bursaha, Dr. Noor Laila Binti Muhammad Zanuri, Senior Lecturer of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, University of Science Malaysia. Yang Bursaha, Technologist Dr. Sharizal Nasri, Principal of Desa Siswaras II, Yang Berusaha, Dr. Gui Sailing, General Manager of Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC, Respected Sponsors, Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC, and Mira Wardrop, Respected Mr. Hussein Mamadris, Madam Nurul Farhana Cihasan, Madam Muazza Ismail, and Madam Nik Nur Izati Muhammad, the Deputy Principals of Desa Siswaras II. Respected Mr. Ahmad Takzan Lim, the President of the Students' Council of Desa Siswaras to AMPDR. Respected Moderator Mr. Jovinson Dalfinus. 
beloved the high committee members of MPDR, MPDR members and the fellow audience. I am Jordi Alvo Oswan as the project director of the Power of Youth Taking Action. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank you to respected Yang Berbahagia Prof. Dato. Dr. Aileen Tan Shaohuai, Yang Berusaha Dr. Nor Adelina, and Yang Berusaha Dr. Nor Rala for their willingness to join as speakers in this program. Furthermore, I would like to thank our sponsors from Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC, and Mira Wardrop for sponsoring our program today. Thank you to all participants who are willing to enliven in this program. We are grateful to be able to get here to conduct, to conduct this forum, the Power of Youth Taking Action. I am pleased to welcome all of you here today on behalf of Majlis Penghuni Desa Siswarestu to this forum. Let me highlight that today's forum is the culminating point of a project which could not have taken place without the support of the project advisors and speakers from the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CMAX, and Center for Global Sustainability Studies, CGSS, whom I would like to thank. We are very proud as representative of Majlis Penghuni Desa Siswarestu to carry out this forum. Let me start by saying that as an association, we made an effort to strongly push for a wider narrative on the dangers of pollution in the ocean. I am happy to introduce this forum today because it is about marine pollution that results in damage to the environment, to the health of all organisms, and to economic structures worldwide. Dear guests, the purpose of today's forum is to spread awareness to all communities, especially students of University Science Malaysia. We, youth, should be the voice of nature to urge humans to stop water pollution. This forum aims to cultivate human concern for other life forms and apply the element of SDG 14, life below water. It is hoped that this program can create a positive impact on youth in the community, audience and community to cultivate a high value of compassion towards protecting our environment. Finally, I would like to thank everyone involved in this forum for their many valuable contribution. I look forward to an interesting discussion and I wish all of you a very enjoyable forum. Thank you. Thank you, the project director, Mr. Jordi, for the speech just now. Next, I would like to invite Yang Berbahagia, Professor Datuk Dr. Aileen Tan, to say a few words on this program and proceed to officiate the ceremony. Please welcome. Thank you, uh, Nov Fatona, the MC of tonight. Yang Berusaha, Dr. No Adelina Muhammad Akib, Deputy Director of the Center for Global Sustainability Studies, CGSS, University Science Malaysia. Yang Berusaha, Dr. No Laila Binti Muhammad Zanuri, Senior Lecturer of the Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CMAX, University Science Malaysia. Yang Berusaha Teknologis Dr. Shah Rizal Nasri, the principal of Desa Siswa Restu. Yang Berusaha Dr. Gui Sailing, general manager of Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC. Respected sponsors, Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC and Mira Wardrobe. Respected vice principals of Desa Siswa Restu, Puan Muazza Ismail. Puan Nik No Izati Muhammad, Puan Nurul Fahana Cik Hassan, Encik Hussein Muhammad Idris, respected President of the Students Council of Desa Siswa Restu, Mr. Ahmad Fahzan Lim, Jody El Elva uh, Osman, direct Project Director of Life Below Water Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to everyone. First and foremost, I would like to thank everyone in this Webex meeting for taking time from your busy schedule and your holiday to attend this event. I would like to express my pleasure and honor to be here for the Life Below Water Forum organized by Majlis Penghuni Desa Siswa Restu Academic Session 2021-2022. My appreciation goes to the organizers 
for inviting me to this impactful program and a program that is very close to my heart. The theme of this forum is the power of youth taking action. This team was chosen because we believe in the need to encourage our youth to take action to protect our ocean. 70% of our earth is covered by water and without any doubt, the ocean plays a very important role in our environment and human health. By empowering our youth, our future leaders to take action today, we can change the world to become a better place, not only for human, but also for all marine lives. In our collective responsibility to ensure that our ecosystem is well maintained and protected so that future generations will be able to witness and enjoy the beauty of nature and the wonders of the ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, and all my fellow friends, I would like to highlight the objectives that were mentioned by the project director of this program. The main objective is to create awareness of the importance of the SDGs, as well as to increase knowledge on the younger generation's involvement in strengthening the SDGs 14, life below water in Malaysia on a daily basis. Another aim of this program is to engage students in learning more about the goals of sustainable development, which is the SDGs, and provide new perspective on the importance of the younger generation's involvement in SDG 14, life below water to protect marine life. We are proud to announce that UNC Science Malaysia is taking the lead role in championing SDG number 14 in the nation in the recent SDG Times Higher Education Ranking. Well done, USM. To engage and empower our youth in environmental issues, such as pollution crisis, one has to be inspired, a connection with the nature. That linkage should be built from a clear and compelling message about the importance of our ocean and what we risk in depleting it. Sir David Attenborough, the famous naturalist, has once quoted, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they have never experienced. The take home message of the forum today will be, we believe that when it comes to our environment and our ocean, we are all stakeholders, especially the youth, and we all have a responsibility to do our part for our shared future. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the participants for taking the initiative to join this program. This event would not have been possible without the active participation of the students. I believe they will undergo a profound learning experience that will widen their horizons. I encourage students to actively participate in this program as it will undoubtedly have a positive impact on their life. It is my pleasure now to inaugurate the Life Below Water Forums, the power of youth taking action, Majlis Penghuni Dewa Sasiswa Restu, Academic Session 2021-2022, New City Science Malaysia. Let us give a round of applause to the entire team and generous sponsors for contributing their time, effort, ideas and commitment to make this event a huge success. I am confident we can bring this event to higher level and to educate more people, especially the younger generation, and on this important matter. Thank you very much. Back to you, um, MC. Thank you, Professor Datuk Dr. Aileen Tan for your words of wisdom and for officiating our program today. Now, we present the gimmick video.
Boleh ni, kena terbun ni. Betul, betul. Okey, pasunya di mana? Buang botol dalam air. Kenapa buang botol dalam air? Saya nak tahu. Buang. Itu balik ni. Apa? Hah? Apa nak jalan? Tidak. Eh, siap buang. Apa nak jalan? Mana kamu punya tadi? step towards changing the world. The solution start with you! For your information, this gimmick are prepared from all project members. Ladies and gentlemen, Majlis Penghuni Desa Siswa Resu MPDR is the architect and driver of this forum STG14 Life Below Water. The theme for the, for the forum is the power of youth taking action. For your information, our synergy partner of this forum is Center for Marine and Coastal Studies CIMEX University Science Malaysia. As we know, marine pollution is a growing problem in today's world. Our oceans are saturated with two main types of pollution, chemical and trash. Youth, the leaders of tomorrow, can play a major role in the implementation of sustainability develop, sustainable development goals today. To discuss more about this topic, we would like to invite Mr. Joe Vincent Delfinus, who will be the moderator for today's forum. Please welcome. Greetings everyone. Thank you to Ms. Patona for passing the floor to me. Respected Professor Dato Dr. Aileen Tan, respected forum panelists Dr. Nur Adelina Muhammad Akib, Dr. Nolaila Binti Muhammad Sanuri, Principal and Vice Principals of the Sassi Suarestu, Yang Bersaha Dr. Gui Sailing, General Manager of Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC, Respected Sponsor of the Night, Penang Youth Development Corporation and Mira Watrop, Jordi Elva Osmond, Project Director of Life Below Water Forum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Joe Vincent, your moderator for today's forum, Life Below Water, the power of youth taking action. This time, Majlis Penghuni Desa Siswarestu of University of Science Malaysia has brought you a topic that highlights how our younger generation practice SDG 14, life below water. This involves action they take to address a worldwide issue, which is water pollution. Before we dive into the subject, let's get to know our panelists for today's forum. Our first panelist is Dr. Noor Adelina Muhammad Akif. She is a lecturer and the deputy director of CGSF. Her research interests are population genetics and molecular ecology sustainable fisheries. Her academic background includes a Bachelor of Applied Science with honors in Aquatic Biology, USM, Master of Science in Marine Science, USM, and Doctor of Philosophy in Population Genetics, USM. Our second panelist is Dr. Noor Laila Binti Mohamed Zanuri. She is a senior lecturer of Center for Marine and Coastal Studies, CIMEX, USM, co-leader Asia Oceania for Early Career Ocean Professional ECOPS, co-flood Sam Working Group and Marine Ecotoxicology. 
Her academic background includes a Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology, University of Malaya, Master of Science in Aquatic Biology and Resource Management, University of Exeter, United Kingdom, and Doctor of Philosophy in Marine Biology, Newcastle University, United Kingdom. And we already know the two of our panelists for today. So let's get started with our question, shall we? Dr. Adelina, can you share some ideas on practical ways young people can help enhance life below water? Thank you. Thank you for the question, uh, Joe, Vincent, Delfinas. I also like to thank, um, before I start, I'd like to thank Majlis Desa Sitwa and, uh, and also to the project director, Jordi, uh, for inviting me. And also to, and also um, I would like to congratulate uh, uh, Prof. Dato Aileen Tan for the great speech. Uh, she was my supervisor when I was doing my master's, just to let you know. So um, some ideas on practical ways young people can get involved in rescuing life below water. Well, um, well, the first thing I think that uh, youth can do is to get involved with organizations or activities involving the ocean and its wildlife. I bet there is uh, many, um, many, many, how do I say, um, organizations that they can get involved in. Um, for example, we have here the Penang Youth Development, if I'm not mistaken here. Yeah? I guess, I guess you can, I guess you can um, group together uh, to, 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 to do something uh, about uh, uh, rescuing the life below water. And also, whatever, uh, and then after that, you can find a goal, uh, a goal 14 charity that you want to support, especially uh, when it comes to the ocean. Uh, what you want to support if you can give any donation big or small you know it can really make a difference if if you really want to help and rescue life below water and also i, I think the most important thing what uh the the the, the ideas of, on practical ways young people can get involved is to reduce waste okay and as you can see in the video just now um i mean the the, the girl just threw away the 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 trash without unknowingly okay and then so i guess what we can do is we can reduce waste okay so much of the waste that we produce on land always end up in the ocean so we should stop using plastic bags especially and because usage and wrong disposal of plastic bag is a major cause of marine pollution i guess that is one of one of the ways that we can can help uh, uh, the ocean and and some practical ways and and also um because you guys are young and you you have all this the social media and all you can start you can run a campaign on the effects of plastic use on the seas and the oceans you can start a campaign on 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 anything that um you, you are interested in when it comes to life below water in the oceans i i guess um um the, the sky is the limit uh for all of you because you know now is it's because it's the power of youth and and all of you, you know are here together you you know what you want to do after this so you just get together i guess i guess that's all i guess um that's the most practical way that i can think of i guess um right now <laughs> yeah thank you doctor and it is very important yeah as dr has said we need to reduce our ways use our social media as to influence other not to use many ways because we know that online there's too many ways and after that it will go to the ocean so we need to reduce our ways Thank you, Doctor. And now, Dr. Norella, what else do you think can be done to sustain marine resources? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. First of all, I, I'd like to thanks to uh, for inviting me as a, a, one of the panel for the, this forum. So uh, it's a very good question, uh, by the way. Uh, but when we talk about sustainability, when we talk about conservation, um, we need to know first the situation and the functions of our oceans, uh, our seas, our marine resources. So uh, then when you understand the function, you will know the important, why the importance to sustain and conserve our oceans. So um, it's important to know the principle behind the sustainability and ocean conservation. So our oceans, our seas, and our coastal area are form an integrated and essential components of the Earth ecosystem, and uh, it's a very critical uh, to uh, for our sustainable development. So our ocean, like a Prof said before, Prof Eileen said, uh, produce half of the oxygen and absorb absorb. 
35% uh, of carbon dioxide and it's covered two-thirds, 70% of Earth's surface that contain 97% of planet water, our planet, okay? So in this case, first, you need to know that our ocean give a service, the great service to us by um, uh, to help us to regulate our climate and weather, weather patterns by transporting the heat from the equator to the poles. So this is the first... Uh, services that the ocean provide to us um, they give the primary regulator for the climate change okay for the climates so the second one uh, is our ocean provide uh, help in terms of logistics in terms of transportations they also our ocean also help in terms of economics in terms of tourism where uh, um, most of the benefit in good service in goods and services are uh, in ocean business industry independence, but uh, like for recreations, uh, our ocean also provide many unique recreations from the fishing, from boating, from kayaking to the whale watching, diving, snorkeling, and also uh, maybe uh, coral reef watching. So this is all the services that ocean provide to human being to us. Okay, so when we know. Um, and the most important thing about the ocean, they provide us about the global food security and also human health and well-being. So these three functions, the three big uh, services that ocean provide to us. So when you know the services about the ocean, you need to know how to conserve, how to sustain our oceans. So since our topic today is empowering the youth, Actually, there is a lot of uh, uh, the lot of way to conserve and sustain the ocean. But I want to highlight about the youth, the the uh, important of youth taking action. So, as you all know that you are all in uh, the demographic, you are the biggest uh, in the world and the most risky group. Okay, but uh, you have the smallest voice, which is um, nobody want to hear your voice because maybe uh, us as adult don't think your voice is important. But I personally think that you youth, young generation need to actively engage uh, to help to prevent the marine uh, pollutions. Um, what can you do for this to prevent or to combat the marine pollutions? So uh, first thing first, I think you can create your own project like uh, environmental awareness, or you can do a small action uh, to show uh, that have a big impact, okay? Like your uh, video uh, uh, before, it's very, um, uh, shows that in, in a small action, they give a big impact, okay? So like you can do very small things, like you can want the diver from touching from the coral reef, um, uh, maybe you can advise your friend, do not use the chemical, or microplastic for your uh, cosmetic product. You can reduce to use the fertilizer. Or even if you go to the picnic on uh, at the beach, uh, please don't uh, leave your trash behind because all the trash on the land will go to the sea. Um, the second thing, uh, the youth, our youth also can support or um, support our blue economy. So uh, our youth need to learn about um, where it, the fish is come from and how it can be caught. So um, you have the, sh the choice to uh, choose which one you want to consume. consume okay? This is uh, another uh, thing that you can uh, um, uh, help to reduce the uh, ocean pollution. And then um, uh, um, beside that, you also can help to combat the climate change by turn off like uh, unnecessary electronic device, uh, replace the light bulb uh, with the uh, high efficient uh, light bulbs, or maybe you can conserve the water and eat less meat because meat. Um, uh, we need more resources to get the meat. Okay, uh, or maybe you can have 
instead of uh, go to the university by car, you can use a bicycle or walking. All these can help to uh, sustain our environment uh, and our oceans. And the last one is, uh, I think, because you are very young, you can uh, stay informed and help uh, others to um, create the awareness. Use your media socials, use your TikToks, use your Instagrams, use your Facebook as a medium to create, to let everybody know about how important are the oceans. Uh, why we need to uh, reduce the pollutions uh, in terms of marine pollutions. And in order to all, to do all of that, I think it's very a good step if you, feel you, if you can find the youth, if you can find the good mentor. So the mentor itself can help you to guide in the good direction, okay? Uh, because when you talk about sustainability, conserv uh, conservation, it's not a one-way project, one, one project and then stop. It's continuously, it must be sustained. So you need a good mentor and also your spirit need to be always high. Do, uh, you need to fight your apathy. Don't let, don't have, don't, I mean, uh, you're interested, you're interested, uh, don't uh, make your, um, anybody uh, make your spirit down. Okay, um, this is like how you, uh, how youth can create, I mean, can conserve uh, cons uh, our ocean, I think, yeah, in my opinion, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Laila. And that was a very thought information all of the audience can uh, take. Like, we need to know the function and the principle of the ocean so that we know what we need to do to sustain the ocean. And that's a very good full and powerful messages from Dr. Laila. So, going on to our next question. Dr. Adelina, why does the world need to goal 14, which is life below water. <laughs> Why does the world need goal 14? <laughs> um, so, um, in the SDGs, in the Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17, all 17. And of course, we start from the no poverty and then no hunger until the rest at the SD 17. And SD 14 is um, life below water. Um, that is short form. The, 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 the long name for uh, goal 14 is conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. So it's only known for uh, short uh, life below water because it's easier to remember. So I guess the long title itself shows why we need uh, goal 14. And then, um, um, I guess uh, just now, uh, Dr. Laila, she's already uh, explained to you uh, why is the, the importance of the ocean, right? Because it's about 71% of uh, the, the, the Earth's surface. I guess, I guess that's why we need because it, it is it's, it's the biggest um, surface uh, on, on Earth about, and then after that, it has the largest ecosystem. Okay, and it provides us with free goods and services from food that we eat and, and, and the oxygen that we breathe. So, so it is important. Okay, and then, and then it also gives us jobs. Okay, why we SG fourteen is important because the ocean gives us job. Um, about because about three billion people depend on marine coastal biodiversity for their livelihood, and that is close to forty percent of the world population because now we have about 7.75 billion people and, and then 3 billion people depend on it and then about 50 percent of population uh depend on 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 the on 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 fisheries for their uh, primary source protein especially in the least developed countries and and it provides about 57 million jobs globally and this is all uh, when we talk about statistics okay you can always google that okay and then and then um, also, um, if, and also, Dr. Laila also said the oceans uh, regulate the global climate system. Like, the ocean is like a giant conveyor belt. Okay, it's like a, a big conveyor belt. So it it, it, it circulates uh, the, the 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 warm surface current carrying less dense water away from the equator towards the pole, eh, down here towards the pole, and the cold sea ocean currents carrying denser water away from the pole towards the equator. So if this system fail, okay, we might, uh, our Earth might be uh, faced with a catastrophe. So if you ever watch the movie, 
there's one movie where suddenly the 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 world become cold. Remember, there's one movie. I can't remember the the, the title of the movie. I can't remember. I was discussing with my student uh in the last class. I can't remember. And suddenly the world becomes very very cold. It's because of of everything. The system all fail. Okay, and that, that's what we have. And and like the forest, okay, um, doc, uh, Dr. Laila, see the ocean also absorb carbon dioxide. Okay, that's how it uh, regulate the climate. Other than being the the the, the giant conveyor belt uh, regulating the global climate, it is also um, how do I say? It's like a forest. Like forest, they absorb carbon dioxide. Ocean also absorb carbon dioxide, and it is and it is it is the world's largest store of carbon. Believe it or not. Okay, so. That is why we need SG fourteen, but that I will not end there. And 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 because of this importance of the ocean, okay, um, because of the 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 roles that it plays, okay. So that's why that's why we need SG fourteen, and and we need SG fourteen more because it's what's happening now. Like the ocean is facing tremendous challenge from anthropogenic activity. Um, and 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 of course you know all the pollution and all the you no know, continual absorption of CO two will increase the acidity level, will cause ocean acidification. I think Dr. Nolaila can can explain more about that later. Okay, and then we combine the warming of the oceans. Okay, that is just bad news for the coral reefs. Okay, um, nobody can live uh um in in a very in a very what do you like what do you say tight um um extreme condition. So imagine if you if you remember, just imagine yourself in a room, okay? Suddenly, no aircon, no uh, no fan, no water, okay? So how do you feel? You feel stressed, right? So that's how all the the thing, all the all the marine life, wildlife feels, okay? And and after that, they will soon die, okay? So so that's what happened, okay? So so when when you do that, okay, imagine that's what happening to you too, okay? So you, you know that. You, that you definitely you will you know you'll be more sensitive about the ocean and then and then when you talk about uh, warming of the ocean scientists estimate if the current rates of temperature increase the ocean will become too warm for coral reef by 2050 so yangni uh, this one uh, i think dr norlaila can talk more <laughs> about it okay <laughs> okay and of course okay why do you need sg sdg 14 is because of overfishing and we have the illegal unreported unregulated unregulated fishing and disruptive fishing practices that would cause the livelihood of these three billion people who who needed this uh for their living and 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 about 50 percent of the world population that depends on 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 fishes for for the for their primary pro protein okay in the, especially in the least developed countries they depend on fish that is food for them and so food for us it's like like dr nolaila said um, we'll be losing um, our food security if we don't save our ocean and that's why we need SDG 14. And of course, you can always, if you can just Google, okay, we have this great Pacific garbage patch, okay. It's a collection of marine debris in the North Pacific Ocean. So this is such um, a big patch that, that, that inside there is a lot of ocean from the land, okay, from, from all the water bodies and that is bad news. So, that's why we need to keep our ocean uh, healthy, okay? And that's why we need Go 14. And I think um, those are some of the reasons that I can I think about why I was, last night I was thinking about it. And then, and maybe there is more, um, I, 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 I can't remember, or it just, you know, it just, but my, um, it's just, it's already 9.45, so <laughs> it's probably, uh, I mean, like, leave my mind, something like that. So maybe if Dr. Nolaila can, 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 and you know, she can add, okay, it'd be much more helpful. So that's why we need SDG 14, okay. Actually, we really need SDG 14 and also the rest of the SDGs. That's my answer. <laughs> Very long, <laughs> you can take notes. <laughs> yes, we should take notes. Thank you, Dr. Adelina. So, everyone who's watching this, you should take note of everything they have said, and it's a very important because the ocean and the body water in our earth is accumulated to be 70 percent 70 or 71 and it is a big number so we need to take action for this so you need to remember to take note and don't forget okay so for the next one the oceans are becoming more acidic 
can see life adapt to the situation, Dr. Nalaila? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, moderator. Um, uh, this is a very, I mean, interesting question if you ask me. Uh, yes, we scientists believe uh, a few billions ago, like three to four billions ago, our ocean is acidic, like six to seven point five in pH is acidic. Uh, uh, but uh, before that, I, I just want like to explain about the acidity and alkalinity. So uh, we measure the acidity and alkalinity of, of our ocean using the pH scale, which is we have like zero to fourteen. So seven is natural. Uh, higher than higher than seven is alkaline. Lower than seven is uh, acidic. And our ocean currently is around seven point uh, eight point one to eight point two on pH. Is is it is a uh, mild alkaline, uh, and we, we all know that uh, the rising of our carbon dioxide, uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide, are uh, very rapidly and make our ocean, uh, our oceans, uh, become acidic. So. Um, how, how do we actually relate the carbon dioxide with the ocean acidification, I mean, uh, acidic oceans? So uh, the combination of the uh, carbon dioxide, uh, atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide with the seawater uh, will produce carbonic acid and hydrogen ions. So this hydrogen ion will create the seawater pH uh, become more acidic. So if more carbon dioxide absorbed by the ocean, the, uh, the ocean become more acidic. So we scientists believe three to four billion years ago our ocean is acidic. But when when you ask about won't sea life adapt since the ocean were more acidic in the past, for me, um, I don't totally agree because um, even though we have more acidic acid uh, in past, but to uh, there are a primitive like a, there, there is a chemical cycles that balance uh, from. Uh, that times to this time. So, um, but if you want to look in the today skills, we have to remember that this balance on, uh, of the acid and alkaline or uh, base uh, was maintained by over a uh, geological time scale. It's, it needs a million years to adapt. Okay, but today, uh, acidification, uh, acid uh, oceans uh, is much more rapid. It's become very rapid uh, pollutions. So we cannot say, oh, this uh, marine animal can adapt in acidic acid. So it's not the uh, it's not uh, apply when it's about the short terms. So it needs hundreds, a thousand times uh, for the marine creatures to adapt for the new environment. So if you say it won't see life adapt, so I will say no. They were mostly the animal that need the calcium carbonate, they need uh, the, to survive to build their calcium carbonate. They, they won't survive in these current situations. Um, they, uh, most probably these uh, our marine organisms are suffer in these uh, current oceans. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Laila. So, everyone, we need to take note that, yes, we can say that the ocean that in the past, like three to four billion years ago, was very acidic, but it takes so many times for it to be like it today. So, if we see that in the timeline, if today is acidic, will you survive for the next three and four billion years later? So, we need to take this on your note, on everyone's mind, we need to start to take care and look for our ocean. Thank you, Dr. Laila. And for the last first part question, Dr. Adelina, what are the main issues of ocean governance? Oh, okay. Um, well, um, um, get, hold on, hold on. My battery. Okay. So, um, what are the main issues of ocean governance? Um, I guess when we, we we can always look at the ten targets of the uh, goal fourteen when we discuss when we discuss about issues with regards to ocean governance. So, if if we say uh, we've talked about sustainable development goals, so we have goal one to goal seventeen. So each goal will have their targets. Okay, and each target, um, that, um, every country 
will have to um, achieve by certain years, sometimes 2020. 2020, sometimes 2025, sometimes in 2030. But most of the target in 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 SDG, sorry, most of the uh, target in all of the SDGs is by 2030. That's why we also call it the um, a, a 2030 agenda. So by 2030, we have to have a certain target, uh, a, a, a certain a certain goal that we need to meet from one to goal 17. So. If we look at the 10 targets of goal 14, okay, we can discuss about issues with regards to ocean governance because it is very, how do I say, um, this is why it's, it's apt uh, with, 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 with what uh, we are discuss, discussing when, when we talk about ocean governance. So the first one that, um, that, the, the, that, that we need uh, to look uh, into is we have to reduce marine pollution. It is in, in the first target of goal, for, goal um, 14. So by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. So this one, I'm looking at the, um, at the website of the UNEP. Okay, so the first one is, of course, is the most important thing because we know we have this, uh, this, this uh, very, how do I say, uh, pressing problem of plastic, the single-use plastic. So that one is very, very, how do I say, pressing matters at the moment. And then we have to, the next one is, of course, protect and restore uh, the ecosystem. So by 2020, we have to sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystem to avoid significant adverse impact, including by strengthening their resilience and take action for their restoration in order to achieve healthy and productive ocean. And this is, and how we do it is we have to, I guess we can reduce our, our carbon footprint. Whatever we do, we have to reduce everything. We have to reduce our consumption. We have to try to make sure that it is stay protected and we have to, you know, ha have it restored okay and then the next one is um of course reduce ocean acidification it should be um one it is, is, is what the, the main issues of ocean governance it could be reduce ocean acidification and then after that sustainable fishing because now um many many years from now maybe we will have problem with food security okay remember uh a few months ago i don't know whether you guys remember or not we have a, a low a production of chicken so everybody was fighting to get chicken remember i don't know you guys <laughs> i don't know whether you guys remember or not because <laughs> you guys don't cook right so maybe if your parents tell you so so it's like that so we have to make sure that you know that our resources our future resources are sustainably managed um to 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 for 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 uh, to you no know, to avoid um over harvesting oh uh, we have to end overfishing illegal unreported and unregulated fishing and destructive fishing practices so that one all we have to get get rid of and also we have to conserve coastal and marine areas okay meaning that by 2020 we have to conserve at least 10 percent of coastal and marine areas consistent with national and international law because in the if you if you can if you can Google, this is this con, con, uh, conservation of bio, uh, conservation of biological diversity. Okay, at least ten percent of coastal marine must be protected. Okay, and uh, we we promise that uh, to the to 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 the world. Okay, treaty. So we have to make sure that. So that is some of the issues. Okay, we have to protect our our coastal and it must be ten percent, and end subsidies contributing to overfishing. We have to, to stop it. We have to stop giving certain forms of subsidies uh, which contribute to overcapacity and overfishing. But um, this is a big issue. Um, uh, I'm not going to dwell into it because it's more, how do I say, political. So it, it is, it is um, something that um, uh, the government need to look into when it comes to subsidy and contributing because this is uh, rather a very, how do I say, controversial issue. Um, thing to discuss okay but it's a big issue but it's something that we need to look into and then of course um we have to support small scale fisheries uh, number nine okay so i i i i'm not gonna go through one by one and then number six is end subsidies and number seven is increase the economic benefits from sustainable use of marine resources okay th those are the issues number eight increase scientific knowledge research and technology for ocean health Okay, and number nine is support small scale um, fisheries, and number ten is implement and 
enforce international sea law. So all of this, if, if you look at the targets of SDG 14, that are, that are the main issues when it comes to ocean governance that we can look into. Um, and and um, uh, there's certain things that I cannot uh, um, go into detail because I have no information or, or no knowledge on that. Uh, but but these, I think, are the most important thing uh, that we should look into. And you guys can just you know, Google uh, the, 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 the target for Goal 14. Th that's all. Thank you. It's a very hard question, this one. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Dr. Adelina. So thank you for the meaningful impact. So we, everyone, can look into the SDG 14 more closely after this because we heavily look into the SDG 14 as today's forum. So 10% of the, our biodiversity of marine need to be protected, need to be conserved. And also there are so many things and so many issues that are going on that we youth need to look after. So it is our role to play now. Now is the right time and not next time. So there was next time, it's a, it is now. Play your role now. So thank you for the meaningful impact now. So we shall take five and watch our main sponsor corporate video from Penang Youth Development Corporation, PYDC. Inisiatif Sukarelawan Belia Negeri Pulau Pinang telah mendapat sambutan yang menggalakkan dan kini telah berkembang dengan cukup positif. Justru bagi pihak kerajaan negeri Pulau Pinang, saya ingin mengucapkan tanya dan syabas kepada 2,200 orang yang telah menyertai sukarelawan belia Pulau Pinang. Saya percaya melalui inisiatif kesukarelawanan ini, para belia dapat memanfaatkan platform yang tersedia ini untuk mengasah dan meningkatkan daya kepimpinan dan kemahiran yang ada dalam diri masing-masing untuk disumbangkan kepada pembangunan belia secara holistiknya. Selamat berkhidmat kepada anda semua. Salam sejahtera kepada semua sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang. Pada kesempatan ini, saya ingin merekamkan setinggi-tinggi penghargaan kepada semua sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang atas usaha dan sumbangan mereka serta semua pihak yang telah memberi sokongan dan komitmen tinggi dalam menjayakan setiap program Sukarelawan Beria Pulau Pinang. Tanya juga diucapkan kepada pihak-pihak UNC yang tengah mengancarkan inisiatif ini. Dalam tempoh pandemik selama dua tahun ini, saya dapat lihat bahawa Sukarelawan Beria Pulau Pinang sentiasa bersedia bukan sahaja menyumbang kepada komuniti kita Mangga tengah menunjukkan semangat berpasukan dalam karangan sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang serta memupuk daya kepimpinan sedia meningkatkan kemahiran diri. Syabas dan tanya kepada semua sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang. Sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang merangkumi tujuh kategori iaitu bencana alam, pertolongan cemas, sukan, pendidikan, seni dan budaya, kerja amal dan alam sekitar. Menyertai Pinang Youth Volunteer sendiri telah memberikan saya banyak pengajaran antaranya mendidik saya menjadi lebih peri kemanusiaan sewaktu kami menyertai misi banjir di Pahang. Pengalaman saya amat bermakna dan dapat melibatkan diri dalam program uh, Mantu SOP di Liga Sepuluh Malaysia. Pengalaman saya dah menyertai program bencana alam, alam sekitar dan program uh, bantuan makanan khususnya pada waktu MCO dahulu membantu saya sebenarnya mungkin membina kerjasama yang lebih efisien dan pembangunan holistik sendiri dan rakan-rakan. Pengalaman saya menjadi Youth Volunteer adalah sesuatu yang menyeronokkan dan menjabat sebab dia telah membantu saya memahami masyarakat ini daripada sudut yang berlainan. Pindah Youth Volunteer merupakan satu platform terbaik untuk penyatuan anak muda. Maka setaklah kami. Sukarelawan Belia Pulau Pinang merupakan satu platform yang amat signifikan untuk belia kita dalam membentuk pemimpin komuniti muda di kalangan anda. Setailah kami hari ini. Penang Youth Volunteers, we make a difference. Youth is all about believing in yourself, 
believing in the potential within you. And giving your best with every opportunity that comes your way. PYDC, for, for youth, youth, for, for you. you. Nothing should stop you from achieving your goal. PYDC is here for you. With more than 10 curated activities each month, there is something for everyone. Be it virtual or physical, you have the opportunity to explore, learn, hone your skills, equip your mind, serve the community and to know that your voice matters. This is your learning ground and your launching pad where you can make an impact, not just with your life, but the lives in your community. You have what it takes to change it for the better. We believe in endless possibilities and limitless options to realize your fullest potential. PYDC offers you the opportunity to explore a variety of options with the event of your choice. We have partnered with industry leaders so you have first-hand access to their stories and the chance to work you with them you. through We Want You Job Matching Program. You can look forward to be guided by mentors who will share their wisdom in every training session and channel those with entrepreneurial ambition to realize and accelerate your startup ideas. As you aim for the stars, we prepare the platform for you to reach for the sky. Penang is your stage to thrive and leap forward to the world stage. Don't limit yourself as the sky is the limit. You are the future. Let's chat the path together. Penang is for you and Penang is for you. As a sponsor, your financial contribution is vital to our mission. We truly appreciate your interest in helping our organization thrive. So, as we can already see the video, so let's proceed with our forum. So, for this question is for Dr. Laila. The question is a bit longer, so we need to get ready and brace ourselves. Okay. For the question, major fashion companies are now innovating products that re reimagine waste into apparel and accessories. Companies such as Adidas, with their collaboration with Parley for the Oceans, are replacing virgin polyester with ocean plastic waste. How much will it help when youth are involved in this sort of movement, Dr. Laila? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I really like the Adidas idea. I mean, the Adidas Pilot Air idea, where they, are, they have their own strategy to end up or to prevent the marine pollution. What Adidas done is they are create the opportunity. They, are, they, are, they try to find a space to create the change where they can stop producing their own virgin uh, plastic and uh, use the marine debris, the, pla the, the marine debris uh, plastics uh, to produce their own pali, uh, the pali air. Uh, I really like the motto, the Adidas motto in this pali air likes avoid, intercept and redesign. So what they are really understand uh, the, the significant behind is like avoid to use a plastic wherever it is possible, intercept plastic waste and they will try to redesign the material itself. So uh, like Dr. Adelina said before, I think um, Adidas uh, First, uh, at the first step, they are uh, realized that our oceans, uh, the trash in our ocean, uh, increasing uh, like from year to year. So at least eight million ton of 
plastic has been thrown out into the water into the oceans every year so i think uh, from that idea from uh, because of this trash uh, the gaius has been uh, created like dr adel said so adidas uh, come and uh, try to create the awareness that the importance uh, how to reduce the uh, plastic uh, pollutions and uh, we all know all the youngsters nowadays really like branded things so <laughs> it's eventually create the awareness uh, throughout the youth on how uh, is our ocean situations and how we actually abuse our oceans currently so with this action it's actually not uh, uh, especially uh, for the youngster is for all walks of life for all a uh, stage of uh, life okay um, it can um, uh, it can promote the sustainable product. So uh, each of the consumer co uh, co uh, customer can choose either want to use or to buy the uh, less plastic product or the plastic uh, the product that use uh, the the plastic product that produce from the marine pollution uh, plastic trash. Okay, um, me myself I totally appreciate what is Adidas done to help to reduce the marine pollutions, and I really hope that other branded uh, will uh, do the same thing. Um, but um, it's uh, like. Adidas has done a very good job in this matter, but other company as well. Uh, we know that Denon, PNG, and other uh, a few other beauty product also replace their uh, uh, scrubbing mi microbit uh, from microbit to the organic materials in order to produce the reduce the plastic pollutions. Uh, yes, Adidas maybe has a power to influence the youngster to become a more uh, clever consumer customer to choose which type of they they can use and uh, to help to reduce the plastic uh, pollution yeah thank you thank you dr Laila. so we as we know adidas is a leading one of the leading brand in the world so yes we also know youngster as dr Laila mentioned that we love to style ourselves right so why don't we try this trend by supporting their brand by supporting how they would make the waste into something sustainable product it it is a very good idea for the adidas and also we youngster and not also young, not just youngster but all stage of life should have done oh, thank you dr Adela. so good we're getting back to dr adelina dr adelina how do we get more young people to drive the goal 14 this is a very good question, but I, and I have a very short answer for that. <laughs> what we can do is, um, how do we get more young people? Because we can create awareness, actually, okay? And and how do we create awareness is through social media, because now social media is very, it's a, it's a powerful um, platform for all youth, and you can get together, and then, and then I guess, um, and then, and then, we should drive people go 14 through, not through, like, boring lectures, you know, they can do fun, and catchy activities for example you no know, use nowadays they do things on tiktok for example so they can do that you no know, create awareness through tiktok uh, to drive goal 14 and also to how do i say to to advertise or to promote uh, whatever um their activities you know and then and then also i guess the, the most important thing is is to start um them young okay to start everything young and and because from young they will start to appreciate the ocean and the life in the in the ocean because um you know you that to to if you're old enough you know sometimes you you your your head just don't want to do anything so I guess you have to start them young and and let them experience the ocean okay because you know once they experience the ocean definitely they will they will love I guess I guess it's just I guess social media yeah my answer is just that it's powerful. <laughs> Yes, doctor. It is very powerful as we love our social media, right? So we need to like we have this. Sometimes we just take picture and post in our IG or even our WhatsApp status, and we we even do TikTok regularly now. So youngsters, take note of this. Use your social media correctly to promote awareness, to promote our sea life and our ocean is very important for our future. Thank you, doctor. So, going on to Dr. Laila again, 
Dr. Laila, why are microplastics such a major issue for marine species and can they affect us as consumers of commercial seafood? Okay, um, when we talk about microplastic, um, um, Actually, okay, uh, let's, let's explain what is microplastic actually. Uh, microplastic are the plastic that measure in a very small uh, measure less than 5 millimeters diameter or across. So there, there are two types of microplastic. Uh, some of microplastic have formed by breaking away uh, from the plastic or fragmented over the time. And the other one that microplastic are purposely made in the small, tiny uh, uh, size, uh, mostly for our cosmetic product, uh, we call as a micro bit uh, used in the facial scrubs. So how how is microplastic can affect uh, human? I mean, in terms of the commercial seafoods. So before that, I would like to explain how this microplastic can be end up in our system. I mean, the human system. So it's uh, start from our food chain. I mean, the way that we eat. Okay, the related of eating what is what. Okay, uh, in the oceans, we have like a very small, tiny uh, animals or filter feeders we call as a plankton. Okay, this plankton um, is it is a because it's a filter feeders. It can just uh, take everything that pass through them. So it probably can eat the microplastic as well. So this filter feeder is the food for the small fish. So when the small fish eat the plankton, so eventually the microplastic will get into the small fish. And then the small fish will be eaten by the big fish. So the big fish currently has the microplastic inside the gut, right? And we are human are eating the big fish. So we are eating the microplastic. This is how the microplastic is end up in our system, in human system. So the study has been... Um, uh, shows that the, this microplastic can affect our system, immune system. But uh, we still need uh, some of the studies, further studies to see this, uh, if there is actually the microplastic harm to the human. Maybe, maybe some of you are not really uh, believe that microplastic inside our commercial food, seafood, uh, especially in food, uh, in, in, in fish. Uh, but, um, uh, as I come from the CMEX, from Center for Marine and Coastal Study, we do the research about microplastic as well. So um, last few years, we have been looking uh, the microplastic product inside, no, the microplastic uh, pollutions inside the fish, like a commercial fish, like uh, ikan kedera, sardine, kembung, plata. And we found that in each average of each fish, we found like at least nine microplastic inside the gut, okay? This is one of the evidence. The second one, um, the uh, we can also call as a commercial seafood, um, kerang, the bivalve, that you all love to eat with chow kway tiao. So in lot of uh, in chow kway tiao, you have like a lot of kerang, okay? Uh, so in one kerang, in one bivalve itself, we found it's more than nine microplastic inside the kerang. So basically, we eat microplastic. So um, how how we we want to prove this that microplastic are in our system is uh, this uh, there is a evidence there is a scientist as well found uh, the microplastic in our feces um, so uh, they do the experiment they have they fit the um, uh, the they fit the people eight, eight participants with fish commercial fish and then they uh, they give the type of um, plastic as well so that they can uh, know the, the type of uh, plastic they eat. So after a few days, they collect the uh, feces and then they found out about 20 microplastic in the feces per 10 gram of stool. So actually, we the, the, we eat the plastic, okay? So uh, is human health effect, uh, is microplastic effect human health is still questionable actually. It depends on the exposure of the concentrations and because of the lack of uh, the gaps data in micro, micro, microplastic research, we still not, don't have enough uh, information about the, is, is it true the microplastic can affect the human health. But um, WHO claims um, that um, actually uh, 
uh, it's quite safe not quite safe because we have a very unique system even if we eat the microplastic we can excrete the microplastic almost the 90 percent of microplastic that we ingest we can excrete them from our body so it's still safe to eat microplastic but there also the uh, study that release uh, that microplastic can affect um, can cause the inflammation of the tissue cellular proliferation and also um, immune cells so um, uh, for for i mean uh, to be safe uh, in uh, to be safe um, we need to reduce the amount of microplastic the amount of plastic that we use in the, our oceans so that uh, we can make sure the microplastic is not getting into our systems that that's that's my my answer for this one yeah thank you dr Laila. so everyone even though who claims that microplastic is not so harmful to the body because our body system is quite unique still we need to be more careful take precaution or whatsoever so that our sea life actually we wanted our sea life also safe from this so if the sea life is safe we are safe everyone else in the system ecosystem will be safe and this is our last question to both of our panel uh, what do you think what do Dr. Adelina and Dr. Laila think of this phrase? Life below water and youth, connecting generation to protect our oceans. And how can we connect the generations to protect our oceans based on SDG 14? Maybe we can start off with Dr. Adelina first. Um, oh, yes. How, how you connect the generation to protect the ocean? Ooh, I guess uh, what we can do is, uh, of course, through education, okay, and also activities um, that has to do with um, SDG 14, and also again simply by the power of social media. I guess that's that's the, the that's the pure connection because everything is a possibility when it comes to social media, especially when we put it in a good use. Um, that's my answer. Very short. <laughs> Uh, if you ask me, uh, I really like this question. So for me to reduce and to protect our ocean is like a continuous action. Uh, it's like I said before, it's a not a single action, then you stop. The word of sustained is really must in order to have, uh, to combat this uh, problem. Um, and uh, how we can connect through generations, uh, for me is, I like the quote. I don't know it's a quote or something like, I like the the the, the quote, it's like, leadership by examples, uh, small action can bring a big impact. So what I mean by leadership by examples, uh, we, we, we started from the small action, okay? Like um, in the family, in one of the family, uh, imagine uh, you are as a parents, you have to educate your son, your uh, daughter on how to proper way to dispose uh, or uh, recycle your uh, waste, uh, teach them how to uh, love our environment, teach them uh, how to make a green environment, blue oceans, uh, so that's uh, the, the information uh, that can be passed through generations. So it's an uh, example by a leader. And then uh, from the family, we go to the a little big skills like for the schools. So the teacher can uh, provide, can uh, do a very good action, for, uh, example to the students, and then the student will grab the idea about how important of our oceans. And then uh, go, we go a little bit bigger to the community. So as a community leader, you need to show the good examples, uh, try to awareness, uh, to try to create the awareness of your community, increase the awareness of your community because when it uh, arrives to the community part, uh, it include all the stakeholders or all the walk of life. So in this case, um, all generation is interconnected. So uh, 
the my my main cons my main uh, point is uh, our leader should be uh, go, uh, show the good examples. So um, yeah, this is I think how we can connect the problem with the generation. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Adele, and thank you, Dr. Laila, for that meaningful input. So the first one, we need to start from early education. We need to teach our children. We need to teach our colleagues, or we need to teach them on how important is our ocean. And the usage of social media is very powerful nowadays, so make a good use of it. And also, our action needed to be continuous not a single tag just like because when we make a movie it's not just a single tag we make a movie we keep on repeating 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 rehearsing so many times that is also how we should protect our sea, sea ocean life and also from the from our video from the gimmick video just now the action may seem small but it takes everyone to make a change and the change starts with you so make good use of the video and make good use of our input for today and i hope today's forum live below water the power of youth taking action has met your expectation and answers your queries about this topic but before that we'll give some a little bit of time for uh dr adele and dr Leila. we have a bit a few questions from our audience here. So I hope we can make into the question. So I will look into the question for now. For the first question, uh, the question starts with, I am still confused about one drop of water could save our earth. And this uh, propaganda or this uh, advertisement, or we already know it since a very long time. We all, not see, we all know that sea levels are increasing. So what is the interaction between human using water that can harm the earth? And that's the question. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't quite get uh, the question. The question, how how do we use water and harm the, the earth? Is that the question? Is that what is the, uh, the... the main question? I think because uh, the they say that one drop of water could save the earth. How can one drop of water can save the earth? Drop of water can save the earth. Oh. <sighs> Naila, can, can you help me? Uh, uh, for me, it's only like uh, uh, like uh, ideology, like one drop of water can save the world. For me, uh, one drop of water is like a small action can save the world. So uh, every small action, uh, you can count and help to bring a better life way. For me, this is for my questions, yeah. Uh, for my answer, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess one of it is is you know when you have a plant and you need to water the plant, right? So one drop of water may help the plant to grow. I guess that's what it means. Okay, I, I, it's very philosophical. <laughs> yes, the question itself is very philosophical. So like we need to think, but like philosophy thing. And also, yeah, thank you for the. Uh, answer like so this is just an ideology so people like one small action with one drop of water you can even like taste one drop right right so it's an ideology like small action can save the earth so just like the video just like uh dr adele and dr Lila had already answered the question before we need to do these things and also i would like uh can invite uh professor dato dr eileen tan can also answer okay and for the second question here i think it's already uh, answered 
Yeah, opinion towards microplastic that exists exists in marine organism now. What can we do? I think uh, Dr. Lela already answered for us already. And we can go to another question. Ah, this one. I think this one is very interesting for me because it has eco-friendly. So we need to see how eco-friendly these things are. So the question starts with, what are doctors and professor opinion on the shop eco-friendly term trend, but the stuff uh, pricey and the materials are same made of material which is unfriendly towards the environment. So what are the thoughts of doctor and prof professor on this? Uh, if you ask me, it's more to attract the people to come to buy at their shop uh, for me. But uh, yes, it's true. Uh, the, uh, all the things, most most of the things like the eco-friendly shop is uh, not eco-friendly, by the way. It's uh, more to uh, eco-friendly in terms of the price instead of the materials, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I also think that uh, most eco-friendly, I think you have to look um, at how it was produced and how it was, you know, um, how, yeah, how it was produced because um, eco-friendly has been, has been, I mean, people have been using it, you know, like, like it's, 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 it's very, very a lot, okay, eco-friendly this, eco-friendly that, eco-tourism, eco, 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 but you have to, you have to check, you know, how it was produced, where it was produced and, and then what kind of, um, what kind of uh, material that they use, uh, and and also the labor. Okay, so so everything can you can just say um, eco friendly. I I don't really um, I I don't really believe in all that uh, unless if 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 they have proved that it's really eco friendly. Yeah, I, I agree, with Dr. Nolaila. <laughs> Dr. Eileen is here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Can I add on a little bit? Uh, well, eco-friendly, you know, is 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 a trendy term, you know, to to actually um uh, portray and attract like what Doctor Nolaila said to attract the consumer, um uh, but then that's where education and awareness is important for the public, um uh, to truly understand what eco-friendly or 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 uh, uh, eco-friendly means. So with awareness and education and and um uh, um the outreach program uh, like the one being organized today um to educate our younger generation now not to fall into the trap of supporting eco-friendly kind of products or or, or or shops when it's not truly eco-friendly so i think the forums play a role uh, in guiding the youth in actually identifying what is the right eco-friendly product uh, or not. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a gimmick, you know, in a way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the input, doctors and professors. So everyone take note, eco-friendly is not like, oh, this is eco-friendly. We should just buy it because it won't do any harm to our environment. So we need to have education and self-awareness about our surrounding our environment. So it's not just because it says it's stated there eco-friendly and the, you just go and buy it. We need to really know what eco-friendly really means. So that's how we need to, that's where came education and awareness. Thank you, Professor and Doctors. So Again, I will read, this is the question from a uh, survey. So I will read the last question, which is from our YouTube. Uh, okay, for this question, uh, there are factories secretly discharging toxic waste into rivers. What are some associations that you can report to this situation? You want me to answer? 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, allow, please allow me um, with the permission of the panelists. Uh, allow me to give my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of concern on discharging toxic waste into rivers, and eventually, um, this waste will enter the ocean and cause harm to many, many marine organism. Um, if any youth or any any people in the public saw such an action or detect any uh, toxic waste in our rivers, first thing, of course, they can report. Um, uh, to, you know, can make a report to the Department of uh, Environment (DOE) department of their their district or their area. And of course, if you want to bring this matter into uh, police attention, it can be done also. So you have an official report, but the authority or the um, uh, to look into this matter is Department of Environment. So they would send um, their officers down to investigate so that it would be the, the, the rightful department to make a report uh, as, as responsible citizen is our role to alert and to do the reporting. Yeah, thank you. Um, back to you, uh, Joel. Thank you, Professor. So everyone, we need to take note of that. So in our area, we have our DOE, so Department of Environment. So we need to really careful to look at our environment because wherever we live, we need to take care of our environment because that's where we live. And we also need for our future generation. So in, in according to that, we need to always take care and be aware, okay? Just, okay, the heavily mentioned awareness, heavily mentioned education. So we need to implement this from now. So take note on your notebook or whatever on your hand right now or you write it, just write it away. Okay. And I think uh, that's for the question. That's all of our question. And I hope that uh, everyone already take a very careful note. And after this, you will go study more because this is just awareness to you. So to spark awareness more and to do your action, you need to go right now after this and look into for it. And I would like to close today's forum by thanking our panelists who have been willing to spend time with us in today's forum. Before handing the ceremony back to our MC, Ms. Swatona, I would like to thank I would like to thank you all for your participation to the doctors and also professor. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the fruitful forum from our panels and our handsome moderators today. Now we have arrived at the most awaited session, which is lucky draw. We shall contact the winners after the session. Now Let's start the wheel. Are you excited, guys, for lucky draw? Can you comment some emojis, some comment in YouTube? Okay, yeah. Wow, okay. we can see the spin right now. Are you ready, guys? I'm not. I'm not sure. Joe. Yeah. Yes. Are you, uh, our participant ready with this spin? Are you guys ready with this wheel? Are you guys let's ready? Spam, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's spam the, the emojis. Okay, let's start our first spin, our first winner. Who will be the one, Joe? I guess it will be me. I guess it would be me. <laughs> it's not really, yes, it's not really you. Oh my oh, god! No. Not lucky me. Congrats, Eddie Wilson Dumont. Okay, oh, for yeah. Eddie, uh, you may contact our person in charge. Uh, and screenshot. Don't don't forget to screenshot this for uh the confirmation or the proof. Okay, okay. Congrats, Eddie. Is that Eddie here? Okay. Next, we have more. Uh, four more lucky draw. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, let's start now. Let's stop, guys. We can do I, this, guys. My heart's so pounding right now. I think it's me. 
It's not you, Jill. I think it's me. It will be me. No. I need to be. Oh. oh it's Lee Wei Ye. Okay. Yeah. Lee Wei Ye. Congrats. Oh, AD, he said. Okay, Lee Wei Ye, screenshot and send uh, this proof uh, to person in charge. Congrats, Lee Wei Ye. Oh, my God. Shall we proceed uh, to the, the next? I think. And three more. I, I hope I, my name will go on there. Uh, it's so excited to see my name. Why do you want to be you? Hey. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Wow, okay. Sharifah, can you say hi on the comment if you hear? Yes, yes. Oh and, uh, hello, and we'll get to notice you. And don't forget to screenshot, screenshot. or not. I will get your prize. Yeah, okay. okay. Why my name is not appear yet, Joe? Yeah. Going on to the last two. I hope it's oh, both of us. We have, we have two more, right? Yeah, I hope. Okay, one oh my you God. And one for me. Is that Diana Rosak or Amy Selini? Or Selihin Fauzi or Hazelina? What is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Is this? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, pretty sure it is. Ah. Oh my god, name? you're so lucky! Yes, and um, we're going down. I oh, think the life. last one will be Diana Rosak. <laughs> is it? Wow, it, maybe she really wanted it. It's maybe Sage Michael's bestie and or Jordi L. Jordi e. Jordan. <laughs> Okay. Oh no, no. it's not <laughs> like Ilman Ibrahim. Okay, this is our five winner. You show screenshot and send to our person in charge for the proof. And if you do not send your proof in 20 hours, you uh your 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 your, your what Joe? Your prize will be claimed by me. <laughs> yes. okay. We'll, okay. We'll we'll get contact to you. Okay, congrats. Congrats oh. to the winners. Okay. Don't forget. Okay, that's the end of our lucky draw. Now, uh, I would like to thank Yang Berbahagia, Professor Datuk Dr. M, Professor Datuk Dr. Aileen Tan, Yang Bursa, Dr. Nur Adelina, and Yang Bursa, Dr. Nur Laila, and our moderator, Joe Vincent, for attending and enlivening our program tonight. I also extend our appreciation to the kind corporate body, Penang Youth Development Corporation program. We cannot for sponsoring this program and also Mira Drop uh, because without your sponsoring, we cannot succeed without the generosity of supporters like you. Before we call it a night, we would like to invite our panelists and honorable guests to join us for the photography session. We will give the message the link later. Okay, everyone is uh, open camera. I will start count from now. Okay. Okay, please have a good smile, everyone. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one more. One. One, two, three. Okay, one more, one more. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, everyone has a sweet smile, I guess. And I guess everyone want to go asleep. <laughs> okay, but okay, ladies and gentlemen, please sign into the attending links and please fill in the survey to achieve your MyCSD and your e-certificate. 
it is mandatory to sign in both attendance and the survey for getting your my CST. Thank you. Uh, this link will open for five until seven minutes only. Please attention.